Hey everybody, welcome back to Dave's Small Engines. I wanted to do this quick little fun video with you guys on showing you how to install these large, or what I would call giant, spikes or dogs on your 261 steel chainsaw. Now, it'll work on a bunch of different other models, but this one in particular is my MS261C with the Mtronic awesome saw. I picked these felling dogs up online for really cheap. I can leave a link in the description if you like. I think they were only 15 bucks, maybe only 10 bucks. You can buy them on Amazon, you can buy them on AliExpress. Uh, I think these ones were AliExpress for, for really cheap, but they just took a month to get here, which is standard when you order stuff from overseas. Now, the quality feels okay. I'll leave that to be determined. But, uh, you know, I haven't had a set of these on a saw yet. I think they look super cool, which is probably the main reason why I bought them in the first place. I've never used them before. I understand that it helps hold the bar straighter when you're cutting firewood or felling a tree. But um, yeah, for sure the main motivation is they look cool. So let's throw some on and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so first things first, let's put these away for a second. Let's get the side cover and the bar off. Tighten those. Jeez. You can see I hardly use this saw. The bar still looks like it's brand new. Okay. Set that aside. Okay, so we're after these two T27s here, and then these two holes here that haven't been used because there isn't a spike on there right now. So the larger one will go on the outside like this. Sweet. And then the smaller one will replace this one here. Okay, so let's add the outside one here first. This kit actually has T27 hardware with it, which is awesome because that's consistent with everything else that's on this saw. So I think it's pretty simple here. Grab the spike, line it up. T27 through here, T27 through here. Thread on the supplied nuts they actually fall down into the grooves here that are preset so we won't need a wrench set them in see how they're held captive in there now then we can spin that over using our t27 Now, for the first little while, after you use the saw, I'd recommend checking these just to make sure that they're not backing off. Now, you see how this is sticking out a little further? Let's just line that up and make sure it's not gonna affect anything. We'll see when we throw the bar on. There it is, so there's the problem there. show you guys that but that the bar is contacting with this bottom bolt so we're gonna have to make an adjustment or cut the end off of this too long now, how long is too long? Well, it looks like we could probably take off at least flush with this. So I'm going to cut these down myself. I don't have any else other ones that will work.
Okay. Time to get the angle grinder out. All right, so I'm going to use the angle grinder to cut off this excess section of bolt that we don't need. You still see I have my mark there. Now, the main thing you need to remember when you're cutting a bolt is to always thread the nut onto it. It's because we, when we cut this off, we're going to be damaging the threads. But if we have this nut on here, we can then back it off and it repairs the threads as it comes out. So that worked pretty well. Let's bring the nut off. Uh, yeah, so. And I, what I like to do is go kind of back and forth a little bit just to make sure those threads are good. All right, so that one's good to go. Voila. All right, so let's do the second one now. And if we've done it right, it should go on by hand. No problem. Yep. There we go. Okay, so that's good to use now. So I'm going to go with some red Loctite here. I know the bolts are going to fit, so I'm going to get some on the threads. Put some in here too, make sure we don't get too much. And the easiest way to do it from here is to put the nut in the back. I was experimenting with a couple of different ways of doing this, and this seems to be the easiest way. Belling spike up top, and then threading one of these bolts, one bolt at a time into the nut. And that way we know we've got thread lock in there and everything's lined up properly. Definitely the easiest method that I've figured out here. Tighten those up. Now we don't have to worry about them backing off with the thread lock. Cool. Now let's try it on the bar. Yep, there it goes. So now we don't have any interference issues with the bar. Oh, good. See, look at how close that is. That's why the importance of cutting those down making sure they don't interfere. Top one, not a problem, but bottom for sure. Okay, so this one to me looks pretty straightforward. There's eight mil nut on the back of the top one. The bottom one just threads right into the mag case here. So to get the top one off, I might have to use a yeah, eight mil on here. Easy, and the bottom one. Now, I trust this hardware that comes with the saw from the factory way more than the aftermarket stuff that's supplied. So what I'm going to do is reuse these. Okay, so it's just as simple as putting it on, reinserting it. Looks like there's some thread lock here from the factory as well, if you can see that green spot and on the bolt here. So I'll apply a dab of the red Loctite, just a little bit, tiny amount. Okay, so here's another issue with these aftermarket felling spikes. This here, you can see that does not line up at the bottom. So it's bumping on the mag case right here and it's not allowing it to go back far enough. So we're going to have to come up with a solution for that. So 
figure out where it's bumping. Kind of like right here. And it actually looks like even if this was drawn back a bit, that it would rub here as well. Hmm. Well, let's see what we can do. One thing you absolutely do not want to do is to try to force the bolt in here. You will absolutely damage those threads. The proper way to do this is to use an angle grinder here or buy the actual felling spikes from steel then you won't have the same problem that I'm having. But we can certainly try to make these ones work. So I'm gonna use my angle grinder here to try, and, to try and contour this. I've got a flat disc on it. And then hopefully we can get some of this material out of the way and maybe a little bit up here on the top as well. Okay, so that's all it took. Give me some light there. Those bolt holes line up now, so we're good to go. Not often I get that lucky on the first try, but this time it worked out. That was all the material that we needed there removed. So I'll grab my bolt here, tiny bit of red thread locker, because if I ever need to take it out, I don't want it to be fully locked in there. Probably should be using the blue, but this will work as long as you don't go too ridiculous on the amount. It should slide right in. There it goes. You can tell there's still some thread locker material in there, the stuff from the factory. I'm not going to totally tighten that down all the way yet because I need to make sure the top one's in and that's easy, right? Just this bolt here. Had some thread locker on there as well, so I'll drop a little bit on. Okay, the top. Okay, at the bottom. There it is. The inside spike is on and ready to go. Now to wrap it up and throw the bar back on with the outside cover and the outside spike. Awesome. Does not look sweet. I love it. Thanks for watching the video, guys. I'm very excited to get out into the woods and use this saw with these new spikes. Um, and I'll let you know how it goes. I've never used them before, but uh, definitely looks awesome, which is exactly what I was after, to be perfectly honest. Can't say that doesn't look awesome. I think it's also important to know that, you know, it, there is some benefit to buying OEM equipment because there are engineers at steel that make sure that things fit properly. But it's also great to know that if you are going to go with aftermarket items, sometimes they don't fit perfectly, you know, whether or not it fits this saw or, you know, maybe it would fit better on my 026 here. I don't know. I'd have to line them up and see. Maybe they have a different bolt pattern or maybe they have different spacing on the casing. But don't get discouraged, you know, with my angle grinder. A little bit of time, a little bit of careful marker work, you can make it fit. Thanks for watching the video, everybody. Had a blast making it for you. My brand new almost chainsaw with these huge felling dogs looks cool now and I'm sure it'll work even better. And I hope I got to help somebody out there in YouTube land. Take care.